Hey, what's up, Scott Balker, with Imagination Creation Films, and today we're talking about these, the Lauer Proteus 2X Anamorphic Super 35 T2 lenses, and they're not for the narrow-minded. That's a stretch. And... So we're gonna jump into these lenses here in just a moment before I do some housekeeping. Lawa didn't send these lenses to me to try out on my nature shoot, but no money has changed hands and while well, they have no say in the review whatsoever. And these are literally shipping off to the next lucky tester. So you'll get a fair and honest review as always. And if the thought of me making them a slightly innuendo joke to get you to subscribe makes you laugh. Um, I think I was probably not supposed to read that. It's probably supposed to make an off the cuff joke get you to subscribe or was it all planned so subscribe so before i get technical and get into the details let's see what kind of images these lenses can create So first off, these Proteus lenses are 2X anamorphic Super 35 and are available now in 35, 45, 60, and 85 millimeter focal lengths with 20, 28, 100, and 135 millimeter focal lengths later this year. Flare options are blue, amber, and silver. And the two lenses I have here are the 35 and the 60 with the silver flare. And they are fairly large lenses, about the same size as other popular 2X anamorphics. They weigh in about 5.3 pounds each, so they have some heft. Now, the image circle is 25.9 millimeters, so unless you love serious vignetting, stick to those Super 35 sensors, well, like they were designed for. They're available in metric and imperial, and these are metric, so I have absolutely no idea how to refocus on them. I don't even know if they focus. I'm kidding. It's actually very easy to convert from metric to imperial which is why i don't understand the rest of the world not converting over to imperial uh, focus is somewhat smooth and controlled with 
the characteristic breathing that you would see in most anamorphics, although much less than many lenses. Uh, the filter outside diameter is 105 millimeters, so it will work with most bat boxes. Now, these are full 2X squeeze factors, so you'll get a 2.39 to one aspect ratio or even wider if you use the four to three as your base. Now, the T2 allows these lenses to really open up and give you that bokeh and, and funky distortion that we all really love and crave in anamorphic lenses. Speaking of distortion, these lenses have a slight pincushion distortion, and it's very correctable if you don't like pincushion. Now, personally, I don't like pincushion. Then again, I also don't like Brussels sprouts. So, you know, opinions vary. Do, do you like Brussels sprouts? Let me know in the comments down below. I, I'm interested in how many of y'all actually like Brussels sprouts because yeah, Brussels sprouts, they're like nature's way of saying, that's a very nice and thoughtful dinner you've made. Now I'm gonna f that up. I mean, if I really wanted something bitter and unforgiving, I'd invite my friend's ex over for dinner. I mean, Brussels sprouts are like the blind date of vegetables. You'll regret it later. And this is like the only vegetable that makes cauliflower look good. Are we talking about vegetables? Oh yeah, Brussels sprouts. Satan. I found these lenses quite easy to work with. Pulling focus was, well, quite easy with their image and they're actually fairly sharp in the center and they roll out to a nice funky but controlled bokeh as you get to the edges. Now, I took these all over the place and was able to pull some really beautiful shots. Now. When I go out on my own, I tend to film nature. It's just my favorite visual, but I wanted to get some nice interior lit shots to show how they'd react to hard and soft lights. And well, the 10K puppet wrap that I hope that you all saw, and thank you, that was all shot with these Proteus lenses. And well, there were some really cool shots in there and maybe some average shots. Now, looking at this frame, you can see the oval bokeh showing up. These, these lights at the top though, those were B7Cs from Aperture, so they are literally flat on the bottom, thus flat oval. But if you look like on the, the drum chrome, the reflections there, you can see the oval bokeh. And I was shooting with a 200 watt LED, shooting into the side of these lenses on every shot. I, I would move it around until I got a really nice flare that I wanted, and then I'd just you know, let it go. Speaking of flare, these are much more mild than you would think. They don't give a strong streak flare. It's, it's there, but it's much less than other anamorphics. And it's, it's almost hard to get them to flare at times. And I was, I was kind of hitting them at some strange angles to get the, uh, the flaring. Now those waterfall shots were using the Bright Tangerine Prodigy rain deflector. So we were right up in that waterfall. It was actually a lot of fun and cold. Um, the rainforest shots were a ton of fun, especially in the fog. Now, the redwoods are where I saw the first hints of CA, and I was shooting wide open with the, the red END, and well, it showed up when, well, the bright sun would blast into the lens, and you can see it here. It does clean up a little as you stop down, but it's there. Fortunately, with today's technology, you can clean that up if you, you don't like it. Now, I only had two focal lengths, but using these lenses for the first time, I actually liked shooting wider with the 35 millimeter and honestly would like to try the 28 of the 20 when they release. I mean, I've always stated that I'm not a big fan of wide shots, but for some reason, these lenses really changed my perspective. Well, a little metaphorically and well, I guess literally. <laughs> Now, one quick trick their lenses have is the very quick back focus adjustment. Just set the focus to infinity and then loosen a few screws and turn the back focus adjustment until it's sharp and boom, back focus happiness. Now, I think the images speak well for themselves, but what are the pros and cons? Well, pros, the quality. They are built well and will make a very nice image low flaring, that's a good thing. I mean, we get it. Everybody go home, party's over, JJ messed it up for everybody. 
the price. These are only $49.95 US, $4,995. And for a market that has lenses ranging from under $1,000 to $75,000, the price for what you're getting here is really good. Uh, The built-in back focus adjustment, it's another pro. Cons, pin cushion distortion. It's, It's opposite of what we would normally like, but it's correctable, but it's there. Um, focus was a little more free moving than, than I would prefer. Um, these are pre-production lenses, so they might be tighter on production. I, I don't know. Um, another con, um, Brussels sprouts. I, I really couldn't think of a, another fair negative, but I mean, for what you're getting for the money. So, I mean, let's just destroy Brussels sprouts some more. <laughs> So overall, I really dig these lenses. They're really nice anamorphics while being too overly anamorphic in character, JJ. They are pretty decent lens for the money. They're currently on the top of my list for anamorphics for me to buy in the not so distant future. And before someone comments, but Scott, you never seem to give negative reviews. You're biased. Of course I'm biased. Everyone is biased on what they like. I know what I like, but I'm honest in my reviews. And I don't review bad products, so... What do you think about these lenses? Let me know in the comment section down below what you think about them. Would you you like them? Is there some things you don't like? I'd love to know your thoughts and remember to subscribe and support the channel by purchasing through the affiliate links down below. Also, you can become a channel member as well. It allows you to be part of the cool kids club like these top tier members. And as always, as I like to leave it, don't let your passions center around your life. Let your life center around your passions. (laughs) 